My name is Mark. Welcome to the Totally Honest Cooking Show. We're going to do Migas tacos today, so we're starting with some eggs. We're just going to crack them on the counter. And one of the things that some people do is they crack the eggs on the side of the bowl. The problem with that is that you wind up um, breaking the shells, and you don't want to break the shells. That's a whoopsie doodle right there. Um, that's okay. We will just... <laughs> now I see why people make cuts. One of the things that behind the Totally Honest Cooking Show is that I wanted to see if I can do a cooking show without making cuts and edits. I want to show people the mess ups, right? Because a lot of people watch cooking shows and don't make anything. And I feel as though we need to get to the point where we're confident in what we're doing and we need to not be afraid of things a lot of people watch cooking shows and don't make anything and you don't need to do that you can cook things live your life experience things anyway i got my four eggs in the bowl. We're gonna take salt, pinch of salt. That's gonna help break down the proteins and um, make for a softer scramble, I guess, a looser sort of thing. Y'all understand, I think, once we get going. Um, if you don't have time to salt the eggs, you don't have to salt the eggs. Like most things in cooking, you'll find that a lot of things are optional depending on how much time you have and what you have at the ready. Um, but we are going to dice this onion. Get rid of that. And also, if you don't have a chef's knife, I do recommend them. Um, they aren't just for special occasions or being fancy. They will make everything faster you don't need to try to um do this with a little knife you do it with a chef's knife it's faster you get good at it you're more efficient and you'll get more out of the process i think it's a little bit it makes cooking less like work we'll say that we're gonna put this guy in here let him chill out. It's okay if we make a mess. That's what it's cooking, you know. You're gonna make a mess sometimes. Notice that when we're cutting an onion, we do this thing. You use a little bulb at the end to grasp like a handle. You cut some slits down the center and then cut back to the bulb go back to the bulb sometimes you're gonna miss that's okay um, the goal of this show is to leave up the screw-ups so that everybody can see I'm thinking that every week I'll do an edited version as well and get down to the bare bones if you're the kind of person that likes that um, we've cut the onion and now we're ready to move on to our friend the tomato Migas originated as a Spanish dish with uh, leftover bread and eggs. It's a breakfast dish for shepherds and stuff like that. I looked it up on Wikipedia. I first came across it on an episode of Archer when one of the characters demanded Migas. I was like, what's that? Never heard of Migas. And so I made Migas. This recipe started as a Serious Eats recipe, but I've made a couple little changes here and there. Um, We're gonna salt our tomato. Salting brings out some of the flavors and helps uh, bring the moisture down a little bit. Um, you know, once you learn 
how much salt you like. You can use as much or as, li or as little as to taste is, but you have to learn to taste in order to salt to taste. That's what to taste means. Um, so, you know, play with things. Experiment. Go nuts. A rat in a Pixar movie once told me that anyone can cook, but only the fearless can be great. And that's kind of the mantra behind the Totally Honest Cooking Show. Anyway, we are on to our green onions. These, you can eat the whole thing. You can chop it up however you like. Today, I'm not using the stalks, so I'm getting rid of them. Um, sometimes that's going to be a thing. And I'm only using two, so we'll put the rest on my floating counter. You will find that this kitchen is the size of a postage stamp. And for that reason, I have kind of had to modify as we go. But that's one of the things that I think that we can take from this. Anyone can cook. It doesn't, you don't need a big space. You got this. You can get out there and make Miga's tacos right along with me. And the reason we're peeling these, by the way, is because even if you wash them, the outside layer is just going to be dirty. So you peel the layer off. You don't have to scrub it because the, it's not dirty on the inside. Um, so we're going to cut off the stems. Stems go in the trash bowl. Then we're going to just chop these away real quick. Notice we keep our fingers tucked in so that we're less likely to chop them off. Um, don't chop your fingers off. I have a firm no blood in the kitchen rule and it hasn't been violated in about a month. Um, hopefully I won't cook my, cut myself on the show or cook myself on the show. That would be bad. Um, notice I'm cutting little ringlets. If I make one too big, oh well, they go in. Uh, usually the people that I'm serving are more forgiving than a five-star restaurant. You don't need to be perfect. Um, I'm also going to do some garlic. With the garlic, you don't even have to peel it ahead of time. I peeled it to see if I had any garlic that was still relatively good. Um, you take the flat of the blade, you put it on top of the garlic, you go like that. Notice you have crushed the garlic. Probably didn't need to hit it as hard as I did the first time. Um, then we're going to cut it up. Come on, Mark. You're not fighting Balboa. You don't need to hit it that hard. What are you doing to the garlic, man? And I'm just going to toss it right in the pot. Now. Now, I'm probably only going to need half of this. This is just here to add a little sweetness. And... Um, you take the core out and then you're good to go. Um, if you want, you can be a little bit more neurotic about those seeds than I am. I'm not going to be though. Um, it's been a long day. I'm hungry. And some days you just want to do that, you know where you speed through. This is a red pepper and we're cutting it up. Notice that unlike what you might see in other cooking videos and other cooking shows, this isn't precise. It doesn't have to be. You learn precision over time and sometimes when you are, be careful with the knife though, don't do that. Um, when you're in a rush, you just want a quick meal that isn't going to take a lot of time. Now, with these, we want to be a little bit more careful because with hot peppers, you want to make sure that you get what you want. Um, what I mean by that is you got two components that give you heat. Okay, you've got the seeds and you've got the ribs. 
the ribs are what produces the oils that get on the seeds and makes it hot. So if you don't like spicy food, or you're not supposed to eat spicy food because your doctor told you not to, you're going to peel that rib off and then you're gonna toss it. If you like spicy food, leave it on. Um, make sure you wash your hands after doing this because if you don't wash your hands after doing this and you touch your eyes or you go to the bathroom and forget you were chopping hot peppers, you're going to have a problem. And you won't need medical attention, but you're gonna feel like you might need medical attention. I've never done that personally, but that's what I was told. So we've, we've started by slicing into little ribbons, and then I'm just gonna take my knife, rub it, run it down the end. Notice when I get close to my hand, I move my hand away. You don't want to go too fast. Don't showboat with the knife. That's how you hurt yourself. Once you get down a little bit of technique, you can start getting speed. I want to put these in here with this. Um, I have a process for this. I go onions first, let them get a little heat, and then I will... Um, add the peppers. Now, same thing here, only with a jalapeno, the easiest way to do this is to just grab a spoon, fit it into the end, especially if it's a big one like this one. This is a chonker of a jalapeno. Dig that out, toss it. Dig that out. Toss it. And now, notice that the first part of the cooking is prepping. With some dishes, you can start everything all at once and the prepping will take care of itself while you let other things cook. Uh, for stuff like this, you want to do the prepping ahead of time so you don't burn anything. Um, now that I've got this jalapeno done, I'm going to let it go and then I'm going to turn the heat on. And it's okay if you mess up and you throw it in the wrong bowl or something like that. Doesn't gotta be perfect. Um, but we are going to start the heat. Um, this pan is for tortillas. Now, some cooking shows will tell you, you gotta make your own tortillas from scratch and they will be amazing. And they will be, by the way, they're not lying. But if you do that and it's a work night, you're gonna spend an extra 30 minutes on tortillas. Likewise, if you wanna be a perfectionist with these, the cilantro, you can be, but you're gonna spend a lot more time on it. Um, little stems are fine. Don't take any stems like this though. You can take a big old handful off here and chop it up if you want. Depends on how much you wanna do, right? This, this can be as labor intensive as you want to be, or you can just grab a handful and, and get going. Because what you'll find is that most of the time you're using this for this purpose, you're using it as a garnish. And so you just kind of ball it up and start slow here. Because if you're going to hurt yourself, it's going to be with something like this because it's delicate and close work. Um, my knife work, obviously, if you know what you're doing, can use some work. Um, 
I am not a professional. I am a guy who lives in a small kitchen who thought, hey, a lot of people watch cooking shows and don't make anything, and that is kind of sad. So let's do this thing. Totally honest kitchen. <laughs> totally honest cooking show. Totally honest, I don't know. Yeah, anyway. Um, I assume I will get better at this over time. And um, those are there. So we'll slap one down, turn this on. Now for this, you can either use cast iron nonstick. This is a um, blue steel pan. And the goal is just to have something that's kind of nonstick that is not going to be a problem. So we're just going to dump this in. Notice we're not really. It's not a lot of work. The prep is up front, it's not super labor intensive. Um, and we'll just give it a little bit of time to start up. If I'm going to edit, this is where the cut would be, but I think we'll just watch and be happy with it. Um, well, that's working. I guess we can get our lime going. This pan heats up real fast, so it'll be done quick. And... The reason we roll the lime, by the way, is because you get more juice out of the lime if you lo roll the lime. Um, we'll also now whip up our eggs. Those are good. And then grab our bag of chips, ignore the fact that we just dropped some things, and okay, that's ready to go in there. You just want, the goal is just to get it started a little bit before you put the onion in, that way when you put the onion in there it's had a little bit of time, and as we're doing this, we can monitor our tortilla and see whether we need to flip it. Usually I do about six tortillas, um, sometimes more. With four eggs, this is a couple meals for me. Uh, if you were serving a family of four, you'd probably use eight eggs. Um, Probably you would double up on the habanero and use the whole red pepper. Um, the tomato is probably fine with the amount that I have. I like tomato in these though. Um, so I use a little extra. And you're just letting it cook. It doesn't have to be super soft, but you want to let it be cooked and with these tortillas you'll know when they're done because they'll start to puff up a little bit and they'll be there will be spots so it's not ready yet i'm probably not going to film all of the tortillas unless it takes that long to cook um just because i feel as though that's not riveting content but we are going to watch this cook because look at it i mean it's you're getting the color in there. It's a really a beautiful dish and we should be just take it in. We got no place to be. If we did, we'd be watching the more labor intensive cut where there's a little bit less. Anyway, yeah. Got our limes ready. Those will be in at the end. And all right. Yeah, it's really coming along. You see how fast it comes up? You can tell because they're getting soft and heat might be a little too high. So we're gonna let that go. Um, and 
get these. Like that. Now the thing that makes Migas Tacos, Migas Tacos, is the um, crushed up chips, tortilla chips. Um, like I said, it originated with stale bread as a field dish, but I'm making Tex-Mex Migas. So we're gonna throw in a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and while that's going, we're gonna grab some cheese. It can be any kind of cheese. You can buy it pre-shredded. I prefer to shred my own. Um, the reason I prefer to shred my own is because it tastes better and it melts better. But you don't have to make it a big deal. Like I said, this kitchen is tiny, so you'll notice that my life is exploding around me. I'm a teacher by trade. It's the last, second to last day of school. And this is the kind of meal I make when I don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen because it cooks fast and it's pretty good. It's very good. When I first found this recipe, I was addicted for about a week. I made it twice in the span of two weeks, which is kind of a lot. And that can go there. That can get flipped. Notice that we're starting to get a color change. That's about the time. We can add our eggs right on top of our green peppers. And let's not throw that right in there so we don't get salmonella. Let's stick that in there. And just wipe this down. Now, the the salt in the eggs should help these be a little bit less um, tight I guess fluffier but again we want to work fast with this pan because this pan tends to see be a little hot and it runs a little hot throw in our tomatoes you'll see that they've given up some moisture in that little bowl and turn that down just a little bit let it relax we can also take this time to throw in some of our chips which we are going to crush up We're not throwing them all in, save some for the end. That's good to start. That'll go there. That's too crispy, by the way, in case you were wondering. And layer that on top. We'll mix it in as we go. And it's okay if we make a little mess. We live here. No one can stop us, Mwahaha. Again, notice that if you do happen to overcook a little bit, it stacks on the bottom, that's okay. And it's coming together real nice. Look at that. That cheese will melt as you go. My recommendation for serving these is gonna be with Cholula. Um, if I have any nearby, I will whip it out and we can see, um, usually, unless I have a reason, I speed through here at the end and, yep, okay. I'm gonna let this finish. I'm going to um, finish the tortillas and then I will be back to, um, to plate. Okay, the last of the tortillas are done, and we are ready to go ahead and add the last of the chips. 
give them a little mix. Check the bottom. Give it a little bit more time, not too much. And then, yeah, that's good. Plate it up and give it a little taste test for the chef. Um, remember, this is the part where we eat. And I, I like a little Cholula on this. Um, you can top it up however. This has been the Totally Honest Cooking Show. My name is Mark. We're going to do an episode of the Totally Awesome Honest Cooking Show every week. Followed by an edited down version on Sundays called The Cooking Show of Lies. Pretty good. Can use a couple pick pinches of black pepper. So we'll zazz it up. And remember, like, subscribe, hit the little bell. Um, next week we'll be doing a watermelon salad. And the week after that we will be doing Jack and Coke ribs. And I hope to see you here from my kitchen to yours. Remember, anyone can cook, but only the fearless can be great. So stick with me. Let's make beautiful things together. And we got through the first episode and we only broke one thing around my apartment. Cheers.